Hi, I'm Karen Rice and welcome to my acrylic painting channel. I'm going to be painting a step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorial using just one brush. Oh yes, just one brush. I've been doing a series of these, they've been really popular and it's great for those of you who are just starting out in acrylics that don't have much, much materials. I'll also be using just a handful of paints as well. I'll be painting on canvas board, but I'll be using materials that you can find around the house. If you like this tutorial and you'd like to see more tutorials like this, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel where you'll get updates of my latest tutorials. So, shall we get started? I'm starting off with um, yellow ochre and a little bit of white and I'm using my flat three quarter inch synthetic brush and I'm just applying the paint now to a canvas primed board which measures 12 by 10 inches but any size will do and if you're starting out in acrylics you can use the back of an old painting and just practice and if you need to prime your picture you can use white matte emulsion paint I've got an ice cream tub for my water pot and I've made my own homemade stay wet palette and I'll put a link in the description below where I have a video Video there where I show you how to make it. So after I put a little bit of black in that ochre and white I'm now spattering. So I've watered down the acrylic slightly to spatter some black on just to get some random marks and I'll blend those in a moment. I'm just putting on a little bit of the a cold blue, a cyan blue with the yellow ochre and just painting in some grasses in the foreground using the yellow ochre and the blue and I'm using some paper towel now to blend with as well. So it's all sort of material that you can find lying around the house you don't have to spend a fortune this is fun now because I'm using the paper towel to create a textured interesting background just using the black dots some of the um, yellow ochre paint and just stippling and pressing and trying to get lots and lots of textures my painting has dried now and I'm using framing tape to actually apply to the dry surface here and it's actually to mask out the silver birch trees and I'm sort of tearing I've torn it as you can see it's not very even but it's very effective as you can see there I'm just tearing the tape trying to get sort of different size trees thin ones short ones larger ones etc you may find it easier just to place it onto your canvas and then carefully tear it does take a bit of practice but it don't worry if they're not all sort of even it's just to help you sort of mask out those trees if you don't have framing tape you can use good old-fashioned masking tape I'm using a natural sponge now it's a very old sponge and I'm just sort of stippling on and printing some foliage for the background my trees are being protected by the framing tape if you like and you don't have a natural sponge you can use a sort of scrubby sponge from the kitchen or you can carry on using the sort of um, paper towels sort or of scrunched up whatever you fancy again you can just find materials lying around the house and sort of recycle them almost so I'm using the yellow ochre the cyan blue the black and a touch of white as well really varying my colors as I go I'm using the black almost on its own and printing with that because there's some real darks in the foliage there. It may look too much, but remember the framing tape is actually masking out a lot. So um, just go for it and have fun with this. It's so therapeutic. It's so much fun. And the greatest thing is you don't need any drawing ability, no painting ability at all. Just, you know, an open mind and have a go. It's It can create some really interesting effects and can be quite creative. And you can see here, I'm using the paper towel again to do some printing with, and it gets some really great textures. I've actually blow dried my painting with a hairdryer to dry it quickly. And I'm using um, some stiff card here, painting the edge and then with some white paint with my flat brush. And I'm just printing. So these look like all the sort of thin branches. And if it's not coming off properly, just apply more paint and be patient and maybe rest it on the canvas or your paper a little bit longer so it takes, as it were. And I'm actually sort of printing in some distant trees as well, the very thin trees that would be impossible to actually mask out with the tape. 
and I'm using now I did actually add I wanted a brighter green so I've actually add some cadmium yellow there and using the cyan blue I've mixed them together so it's a nice mid green and I've added a touch of water and I'm using the flat brush really loading it and tapping the brush with my left hand so that uh, the paint gets released and you get all these tiny spots and it's called spattering and it's great fun and you can actually spatter lots of different colors it doesn't have to just be this one here so you can get very creative with your spattering to create wonderful textures I decide I want a little bit of a light spatter and this is to represent foliage and textures and all sorts of things in the background. So I've added some white to it and I'm doing the same thing, just really spatter. If the paint's not coming off your brush, just tap it a bit harder. Do make sure that you are doing this somewhere, not where it's going to get sort of spoiled by spatters of paint. So um, maybe put some newspaper down or something like that to mask out areas in your house that you might spoil with spatters um, you can see it's still wet but I couldn't resist I had to take my framing tape off I couldn't wait what's really nice here is you've got the underpainting that you painted previously it's not just a white canvas we can apply white now but it's got this lovely sort of light medium tone that we can add darks and lights to so I'm going to add some of the black paint on its own with the flat brush you could use this another household or even a q-tip or something to apply these dark marks on the silver birch tree so I'm using the corner of my flat brush here and also the flat of it as well just to try and get lots of variation in the mark making here try not to have them all looking the same and really observe the photograph where some you know there's some really sort of strong dark marks on some of those trees once you've added all your black dark marks, I'm just mixed up a little bit of the ochre and black just to sort of put a little sort of more of a lighter mid-tone on there so it doesn't look too flat looking and create a bit of interest. When I looked up close at the photograph, I could see this sort of softer yellowy sort of colour there as well. So I'm not putting too much in there, just here and there just to soften back using this flat brush. I'm just using the white on its own now with the flat brush just to put the white edging on the trees there. The light is coming from the right so I'm just sort of showing that now painting the white paint on the right hand side of the tree and uh, try I mean I'm quite an impressionistic painter so I like to keep everything loose I'm even sort of blending here with my fingertips here it it makes it so much more fun you know when you can sort of be really creative and expressive in your painting but do what you feel is comfortable and I know some of my students in the past with anything a bit messy like this they do like prefer to wear gloves and things like that so um, I have to say my hands got very messy at the end of it I think I'm wearing the right top though for white spatter because there's lots of white dots in there I promise you it's not from the spattering though but it's a bit of a coincidence so I'm just putting some shadow colors now it's slightly watered down black and a touch of blue and I'm putting it on the left hand side of the tree so we're really sort of creating a little bit of depth to these trees to make them look sort of more rounded so light from the right mid-tone in the middle and the dark shadows on the left I've gone back with the um card now and I'm stippling in or printing rather with the white paint and whatever else is coming off on that palette as well it's quite much it's a lot of fun actually because the black's crept in there but it's creates some nice textured effects so really just go for it you can scrape with that and really create lots of lights and textures in acrylics we usually work dark to light so I usually keep my whites and lights right to the end there I'm using a little bit of the black and the over and I'm printing in some dark um, sort of branches that you can see in the photograph there which is really nice um, it's probably a good idea to do this on your painting when it's dry and I'm actually um, painting some or printing some sort of darker grasses and sort of broken branches and all sorts of textures on the ground as well using just this sort of stiff card it's and using a little bit of green as well um, what's great about this little painting you could use lots of other different colors it doesn't have to be representational colors if you've got sort of a colour theme in your house, maybe pinks and violets and, and mauves and things like that. So it could be quite a decorative piece of artwork. And you could even do this with the family as well. I mean, it's it's quite it's just because it's so much fun. It's very accessible to all levels. 
love to finish off with a spatter. I've actually um, using my um, surface there. Don't worry, it's not a table. It's just sticky back plastic on a board just for a nice background for these tutorials. And I watered down the white and I've spattered it. It's just a way of stopping me from overworking my painting. I also thought I'd put a mount round the finished painting. It always sort of shows it off a little bit and you know, you can actually pick out bits that work. Sometimes not all of your painting works and mounts are really good at sort of maybe cropping in. And sometimes you can find a really nice little painting in there. So I hope you find that useful. I really hope you enjoyed that tutorial and the fun way of painting these silver birch trees by using the framing tape and painting and sponging and spattering and having lots of fun using that limited palette and just using one brush. So don't forget, if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, subscribe to my YouTube channel and you'll get updates of my latest videos. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching again. Happy painting. Bye for now.